Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be revising a video I made about six months ago about my Diefenbachia plant. I showed you guys how many babies I was able to harvest from the mama plant that I had, but I failed to show you exactly how I harvested it. And so many of you came for me and told me, what the heck, that's what we watched this video for. And I'm sorry. So I've listened to all of your um, requests and I had to wait for the plant to grow obviously, I mean, they can only grow so fast, um, to do this video over again so that I can show you exactly how I harvest it. But before we begin, if you're new to my channel, hey, thank you so much for clicking on this video. Welcome, make yourself at home and watch all my other videos. And before you forget, don't forget to subscribe because you don't wanna miss out on any of my future videos, okay? You wanna be a better plant parent and I'm gonna show you how. I have very common house plants and so I share with you, you know, my care tips and also I share with you its progress over the number of years that I've had the plants. Oh man, I, you know what? I always forget to turn off my ringer, but anyway, please do subscribe. Okay, so moving on. Before I talk about the lighting, I want you guys to know and remember that I do live in Seattle, so I do not get a whole lot of sunshine. So when I tell you that I put these plants in my sunniest window, it's an east facing window, you have to keep that in mind that I'm not getting a whole lot of sun to begin with. And so I'm not really concerned about any leaf burn or anything like that. That said, I know that this plant does like a lot of sunshine because I happen to take one um, to a work or an office environment where it still grew in um, that fluorescent type of lighting. Um, it grew, it grew, produced new leaves. However, it lacked the pattern that you see on more mature plants. So what I'm showing you right now is a baby. These are one of the babies that I newly harvested, which again, I will show you later in this video exactly how I harvested it. However, I'm just trying to make note that this plant does like a lot of sunshine in order to maintain the beautiful variegated pattern that it has on its leaves. So you can see here in the little clip what it looked like when I first bought it. You guys know if you've been watching my videos, my videos, <laughs> videos for a while that I only really buy plants in four inch pots or around there because I don't have a lot of space for larger plants. If I also don't know how to take care of it or if you're a new plant owner, that should go the same for you as well because that gives you the opportunity to get to know the plant and see if you can figure out how to allow it to thrive. And so um, I bought this two years ago and you can see from the four inch pot, it has multiplied into now 10 plants. And so the biggest one that you see in the very back on the big screen is what it looks like now. And I'm trying to encourage it to grow upwards because I do want it to be a taller plant. And so I've harvested a lot of the babies um, from the bottom because they kind of uh, grow, what am I trying to say here? They grow little babies from the soil closer to the stem. And so I'm showing you here what that looks like. So like I was saying, they like to grow at the base of the plant and sometimes they'll grow directly off of the main stem like you see here. And those are a little bit more challenging to harvest or you'll know that that's not really ready to harvest because it doesn't have any roots on its own. So that if you separate something like this on the plant, it's likely not gonna survive. I've never uh, tried to water propagate this. I know it is possible because some of you have mentioned that you just kind of like behead the plant and then stick it in water and allow roots to develop that way. But for me, again, I want to remind you that my purpose is to try to get this to grow taller. And so I'm encouraging it to grow upwards rather than become bushy like a lot of other Diefenbachia plants. So right here, this lone soldier right here is a very good candidate to separate from the main stem. First, it probably already has roots on its own because it's so far away from the main stem. Um, and so that's one that I would propagate versus this one right here. You can see clearly that it's just growing from directly from the stalk and it does not have any um, roots of its own. And do not worry, like I said, in this video, I show you exactly how I harvest it. And so I'm just showing you a way to assess whether or not one of your babies is ready to harvest. 
Okay, so this one right here, which I know I already harvested, but if I were to harvest again, this is this would be a perfect candidate to divide into two plants. And it's because it has two main stems or stalks of its own. And so this definitely has its own roots. And so if you were to separate them and break some roots, it's not gonna be a problem because like I said, they likely have roots on their own. And even if you break a few here and there, it'll develop some more because it already has that foundation of being um, its own plant, I guess, if you wanna put it that way. Okay, and so on with the actual harvesting. It's always best to water your plants a couple of days before you know you're gonna repot it. That way it allows for its roots to um, absorb some of that water and it won't get into too much shock when you kind of mess with it like this and separate it and put it into a whole new environment. But anyway, you can see what I'm doing here. I'm trying to take as much of the dirt off as I can. And then I like to see where you can divide uh, the plants. And so you wanna make sure that the section that you're dividing has enough roots so that when you replant it, it has its own foundation to be able to continue to grow those roots and grow even more. And so you can see the method that I'm using is I'm kind of just like wiggling it and turning it to loosen it up because it will break from your uh, main plant. And so like I described in other plants, it kind of makes that crispy sound when you break it off. So this one has a very little, um, I think this is one of the smallest babies, but it has one lone root. And so this is a little bit risky, I would say, but obviously it was too late. I already broke it off. I thought there were more roots than that, but it doesn't. So I'm just gonna have to take my chances on this one. This is a really relatively strong plant in my opinion, so I think that it will continue to grow so long as you keep the soil moist in the next few weeks until you can see evidence of new growth so that you can be assured that it has taken root in its new soil environment. So speaking of soil, for me, guys, I'm so lazy about custom mixing my soil. I really only use general purpose potting soil that I get from the store. You'll see a lot of the miracle Grow that you can get just about anywhere. I think you can even get it at the dollar store. I'm not too sure, but that's really the soil that I use. I don't really add any perlite or peat moss or anything like that in it because I'm lazy. And if you have the time, I encourage you to do that. You can see this one, this is a great candidate because it's got lots of healthy roots that you know are gonna further develop. But anyway, as I was saying about the soil, if you have the time, then go ahead and do so. This plant will probably require a higher concentration of peat moss or something that's going to retain more moisture than um, normal because this plant does like to be a little bit more, I don't wanna say moist, I don't wanna say that because you might interpret that as watering it too much. I just know that my plant specifically gets super thirsty and that might be because I do have it in a sunny location, at least sunny considering I live in Seattle, but I always make sure to keep I only have one of these in a non-draining pot. So if you're gonna put this in a well-draining pot anyway, then you don't really need to worry about what, um, you know, what you're gonna put in it so long as you don't overwater it. And you you know you're overwatering your plant if you notice that some of its leaves are turning yellow. Sometimes it is normal to have yellow plants or yellowing leaves because they're the older leaves that are just had, they've lived their full life cycle and so they're giving the plant they're dying off because they want the plant's energy to be reserved for producing and generating new growth. And so there you go. I showed you guys how to harvest the babies. Advice on what type of lighting requirements, at least again, I want to emphasize the fact that we all, depending on where we live, have different um, light sources and so for me i like to put this in the sunniest parts of my window and you can see it's done very well in the last couple of years considering all of the babies i've been able to harvest and the type of soil composition that will allow this plant to thrive and so um, i guess as always with all my other plants I only fertilize during the growing season. And so I know that a lot of people continue to do or to continue to fertilize 
in the winter months because there are a lot of plants that continue to grow. This one does grow um, in the winter, but very, very slowly. But my primary reason for only um, fertilizing in the growing months is because I use the fish emulsion, emulsion stinky stuff. And so in the winter time, obviously I don't want to keep my windows open. And so I don't want to stink up the whole house. That is like a primary reason that I personally don't use fertilizer, even on plants that continue to grow in the winter. So last thing I want to mention briefly is that I did get a um, spider mites infestation on a couple of the babies I harvested uh, a while ago. And that's because I bought a brand new um, bird's nest sansevieria from Lowe's that was just completely infested. I didn't realize until I took it home. I should have been actually I, I think I already knew, but I was like, oh, I've got it under control and I was wrong but it quickly recovered. So this is a really strong plant. If you haven't watched my other video already, don't forget to do so. This again is known as a dumb cane because it is highly toxic to plants, or sorry, <laughs> to animals and to people, but only if you go around chewing its leaves. So just don't chew it. To be on the safe side, I actually water my, or wa wash my hands after I water them and I touch them, but that's probably going a little bit overboard. But these days, man, it's, you know, you can never go too overboard with being clean, if you know what I mean. So anywho, I really hope you guys liked that video. Again, I'm sorry for not showing you how I harvested the babies last time, but you can see I've got room to improve. I listened to your requests and I came through for you. So that's it for me. Be sure to subscribe so that you can catch me next week. All right, guys, till next time. Bye.